How y'all doing today? You know what I'm saying? Hope y'all taking care of y'all something today. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, share, and comment, baby. Smack that doorbell for me, baby. You hear me? And keep God first, baby. Start a relationship. And keep God first, baby. Start a friendship. On that note, my good people, I'm going to let this video take off. I'm going to catch it by the end, baby. Let's I mean, go. they say people show no remorse. I'm very remorse. It's because I don't sit there and tear, tear, cry, and I can't cry on cue. I'm mentally disturbed. I'm disturbed and whole, you know. I'm, I can't get stressed enough. Like, I don't mind saying that. I still sit with people. What would you change about that night if you could go back? What I would change? I probably would have, I mean, I had nowhere to go, but, you know, if I could have got my kids and left, which I was aiming to do. Um, I don't really think there's anything else that I could have changed. You know, that was my home, my kids was in there. All I want to do is retrieve my kids. Later in the video, E. Smith passed away from injury. Uh, 7.86 p.m. in the rain, and I And tell me, Ms. Johnson, what do you do for a living? Um, I work with autistic kids. I'm a behavioral technician. And what did you do before that? I was working at eight hours for Huka, doing Huka. How long have you lived at your current address? Since March of this year. 796 Eden Berry address, how long did you live there? A year. Uh, do you remember when you moved it, moved into that home? December 1st of 2021. 20, and was that a rental property or a, a, or a house you owned? It was a rental property. And were you the primary person on the lease? I was. You were the one who signed the lease? I am. And were you the one who paid the rent every month at that property? Yes, I was. Were all the utilities and everything in your name? Yes, they was. Uh, Ms. Johnson, you know why you're here today? I do. I want to talk about the incident that brings you here today. I want to take you back to November 26, 27 of 2022, okay? Okay. Do you remember the night, November 26, 2022? I do. Tell us what happened that night. I was home studying for my RBT certificate. Um, I get a phone call from my girlfriend on a three-way FaceTime call, um, inviting me to go out for one of their birthdays. I agree to go out. I get up, I prepare to get dressed to go outside. Um, during our conversation, uh, was, we was getting dressed, whatever. During our conversation, um, I let Demonte know where I was going. Um, that was it. I got ready to go. I leave out. We go to one club. Well, let's go back. Okay. Tell us approximately what time it is at night. 11. Right. 10 11. About 11 o'clock at night on November 26th. Correct. Correct. And Demonte's at the house with you? He was. And what about your kids? They were there as well. And where were, where were they at at that point? My two daughters were asleep in their room, and my newborn was with Demonte. Okay. Was the newborn asleep at that point? She was. Uh, was she sleeping in the crib? She was. And so you get the call 11 o'clock at night, you get dressed, you let Demonte know where you're going. What happens after that? Um, I leave to go out. I get to, we go to one club. What was the name of the club? Zari. Okay. Um, we're there, just partying, we leave that club around two, go to the eighth hour, which is the eighth hour that I w was working at. And what's the name of the place you were working? It's called Taste. Okay. Um, we get there, we're there for about an hour. Um, my girlfriend's and another coworker gets into an altercation. I, go to the bathroom, I communicate the altercation with Demonte. Um, we stay for a little bit longer. They get to, like, the altercation rear card, they now about to fight. We leave the, at the hour. Let's go back. About what time is this when you communicate with Demonte about the altercation? No, yeah, this is about four. Okay. And when you say communicate, was it a text message or a phone call? I called him. I went to the bathroom and called him. And was he up at 4 a.m.? He was. Okay. And you actually talked to him? I did. And then what happens after that? Um, he advised me that he was going to send someone to make sure I was okay. I let him know I was okay. It wasn't me that was in a fight with my girlfriends and they were leaving. And that I was showing my location with him. 
And what did you do next? I shared my location with her. Um, we left, we, me and my girlfriends met up at the local gas station because my car needed gas to figure out where we were going to go next because I didn't want to go home. Now, uh, tell us what was your relationship to, to DeMonte at this time? He was my baby father. Okay. Uh, and uh, was he living with you at this time? He was staying there. He had him living there. Yeah. Tell me what you mean by staying. So when I say staying, so when we get back to when I had my daughter, because that's how it leads up to him staying there. So um, he he was incarcerated. He got incarcerated in August. Um, I got a phone call back in August of his incarceration. I helped him get out or whatever. And when he gets out late September, he expressed that he had nowhere to go. That the house that he was staying to prior to getting incarcerated, he couldn't stay there nowhere because his friend and mom was tripping, is what he said. Um, I had the baby, I did allow him to come, you know, to be with the baby and stay there since he had nowhere to go. Uh, and while you're out that particular night, uh, did you have anything to drink? I did. What did you drink? Casamigos. How much? Probably like two or three shots. And was it at the first place or the second place? That was at the first place. Uh, and did you have anything to drink at the second location? I did. So after you let him know the altercation at the second location, share your, uh, tell him you'll drop the location, where do you go next? What happens next? We go to an hour called Future. Now, is that the spot you worked at? No, I worked at Taste. The Future is a different eighth hour. Uh, and about what time is it now? Now it's about six, maybe roughly seven. So this is an after, after like hours after, yes. spot, okay. Uh, and Leave. I have two phones. I left one phone in the car because it has the audio malfunction. I can't hear out of it. I take my personal phone inside the club with me. Um, I get there. I'm smoking hookah. I, my phone dies while I'm in there. Once my phone dies, I leave. Why do you have two phones? Because I want to pull the knife. Okay. Uh, and is one phone business and one phone personal? Correct. So you left your business phone in your car and took your personal phone inside? Yes. Uh, and you said while you were in there, your phone died? Yes. Do you remember what time or around what time you realized that your phone had died? I don't because it was dead. Okay. Uh, but at some point, you realize your phone is dead and is that when you leave the club? Yes. All right, mm -hmm. tell, tell, tell us what happens after that. I leave the club, I go back to my car, um, I immediately put my phone on the charger. What, what time is it when you realize, when you actually realize what time is it? What, what time is it? Or around what time is it? Around nine something. Okay. And tell us what happens next. Um, my phone cuts on. My phone cuts on. I'm seeing the text messages from my aunts. Um, a few text messages from Dolo. I meet out with my aunts. Text messages. I look at the first ones on there. Um, as I'm reading the messages, my aunts call. I answer the phone call, it's mine. Um, What's that? Uh, he slammed you on your face. Yes. Uh, has anything been changed or altered about it at all? No. Is it in the same or similar condition as when you sent that text message? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, we will move to admit defense exhibit one uh, text message between uh, Ms. Johnson and DeMonte's mother into evidence. Hey, yes. He just got out of jail and he stays there. And she tells me that she'll be there. She'll be there or she'll see when I get there, basically. Okay. Uh, and about how far were you from your house when you talked to, so you talked to 911 and then you talked to Officer Laney directly. And then about how far were you from your house when you talked to Officer Laney? Probably about 15 minutes, too. Okay. And then tell us what happens and, and where are, are you still on the phone with your aunts at this time? <coughs> Were both of them on the phone, Rochelle and Andrea? <laughs> and then tell us what happens after that. Um, after Miss, also, Amy just 
disconnects. She called me a couple minutes later and told me that she had been dispatched to another situation and that she had to attend to that and to, she let me know to call 911 again to dispatch and let them know that she was to come back out and that I was told to call to give her dispatch back. Notice that the camera that was in my bedroom had been turned around so I didn't trigger my alarm system, my other alarm system to have that dispatcher reach out to me and ask me if I needed a 30s. Oh, uh, and did your alarm, did that work? It did. And what happened? Um, the dispatcher called me, asked me if I needed assistance. I did inform her that I wanted her to dispatch a police officer and that I needed to be escorted into my home. Okay. And then approximately, and then approximately how much longer did you wait uh, for someone to be dispatched? I called again after that. That's when I talked to the female officer. Okay. Told her about my kids being in the home and that I was concerned about the well being. I didn't know what was going on in my home and that Devontae was mad and I didn't know if my kids were okay or not. Um, yeah. Who just pulled your gun out? I did. One shot? Yes, sir. And you've heard the recording that you say, Bob, tell us what was going through your mind. At that point, I, I can't even tell you. Honestly, I, I just know. I shot it and it was just like, I know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, I just know that I, was, I had to defend myself. your daughters telling me hit me? As, I was, as we were walking out, I do recall saying that as we were like, and once we got outside, I do recall saying that. But you told the detective he didn't hit you? Yes. He just came at you, lunged at you? Yes, I told him he didn't hit me that day. Yes. And you felt like you had to do it to defend yourself from being injured by him again? Yes. And did you go down and give the police a statement? I did. Did you fully cooperate? I did. Did you tell them what had happened? I did. Did you give them access to your cell phone? I did. And what about the surveillance video in your house? I gave them access to this one. Uh, and when you, you went outside, what did you, what did you say to the police who were still waiting outside? And I told him he was going to do it. And what happened after that? I was handcuffed. to the police So you didn't have your phone or anything on you at that point? I didn't. Bernetta, B-E-R-N is a Nancy, E-T-T-A. Latoria, L-A-T-O-R-I-A. Campbell, C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L. Uh, you can proceed. I had a lot of things I wanted to say to you, Quinesha. Um, I sat in the airport wondering what I was gonna put on this paper, and I realized that I can't read off a piece of paper. Your, your lawyer did a good job. He painted DeMonte as a monster. He beat, beat, beat everyone. Um, but yet you had him in the house with you and your children over and over again. I know who my son was. He was sweet and loving. You know it. DeMonte was... I'm sorry. So we know that DeMonte was sweet and kind. He was a father of three um, since it was stated that he wasn't the father of this new child. He had three children, a 12-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 6-year-old that walks around with his paper and his picture and tries to show everyone that we meet on the street on who his father was. He's so happy and proud of him, but yet he would never know who he is. Who was he to you? He loved your children. He loved you. I heard the comments that you had made to him. I heard comments that was over and over again how he wasn't nothing. He was broke. You don't have this and you're not that. I remember him calling me. It was your birthday. And he was so sad that he didn't have any money in his pocket to do something for you. I cash tapped him $100. He said, thank you, mama. He said, I love this girl. She a hustler. She grinds. He said, and everything on her body was real. <laughs> I laughed. 
I said, boy, focus on what's important. Focus on how you are being treated by that person. But it was nothing I could say to him. He was head over heels in love with Quenisha Johnson. I remember when I first met Quenisha. My son called. He was at the quick trip. I had came in town to bury my aunt. I was a turnaround trip. I told him I had to go back. I had no time to say hang with him, to chop it up, as he say. I had to get back on the road because I had work the next day. But he said, Mama, you got to meet her. You got to meet her. And I heard through the phone. over here, my MF and house ain't clean, MF this, MF that, and all I could think was, this man was trying to introduce you to his mother, and yet you couldn't even do that. He had to beg and plead to get you to come to the quick trip to say hello to me. I met your children, they were beautiful. The little girls were so sweet. Your son was sweet. Though my son kept telling me, don't tell him my real name. He said, because that little boy could be a little dangerous. I didn't understand what he was talking about but yet that's where he wanted to be. And I let it go. We came to your house and I sat outside. I told your baby girl, at the time I think she was like three. And I said, I'm taking Dolo back to St. Louis with me. And that little girl threw a tantrum, lay straight out in the grass and screamed and yelled, please don't take Dolo away from us. Please don't take him away. Your kids loved him and he loved them too. He was loving them when he couldn't love on his own kids. But what I do know about you in that first meeting was that you were no good for him. My son had a light that shined so bright that I had family, friends, parents, coaches, teachers calling me. No way, not DeMonte. There's no way, not DeMonte. You talking about DeMonte, who would help the kids in the school getting bullied? You talking about the same DeMonte who stops in the grocery store to help old ladies put their bags in their car? This is my son, that's who I know. They called me and told me, ma'am, do you know a DeMonte Smith? And my heart dropped. I had to describe my son to this woman. I'm sorry to this man. And I knew at that moment that he was gone. Because see, a mother's intuition tells you everything. That Sunday, two o'clock, I fell to my knees in the middle of the store with pains and I didn't understand why. Because my son wasn't here anymore. All night I tossed and turned. I had no idea what was wrong. And I got to work. And the medical examiner called. And I couldn't get it together. I blacked out. And then the detective called me. And my first words was, where is she? They said, who? Where is the woman that killed my son? Because I knew it was you. A darkness dwelled inside of you. And not only did I tell the examiner and the detective that, my family knew. See, remember our last conversation was Thanksgiving. And DeMonte, this is the son I know. That smile so bright, that's what I knew. That day he called me on Thanksgiving and we FaceTime and we had so much fun. He got to see my sister that he hadn't seen since 2016. He got to see his nephew. And the men sign like that, she has some darkness about her. You feel me? The situation that him and her was going through is something has something to do with something because maybe, maybe you know what I'm saying, but what made her gonna catch that time? She said the dude did not hit her, but he launched at her, and then, you know what I'm saying, she squeezed on the dude. You feel what I'm saying? That right there gonna give her time. You feel what I'm saying? Because you told the police he ain't touch you, then you up and... Then you up that fire on him, and then you go, you know what I'm saying? At, uh, then you go uh, shoot this man for no reason. Tell me, like you were scared? I'm going to tell you something. If you were that scared, right? I see the dude was jumping on you, beating on you right there and then, then you up that fire on him. You feel what I'm saying? But this dude did not touch you. You feel what I'm saying? And then you ain't want to meet the dude, old girl? Man, look here, man. It sounds like, man, that girl got some darkness about her. You know what I'm saying? You could tell she 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 was clubbing, want to do what she want to do, come home cursing, to the house ain't clean, all that woo -woo -woo, even though the man ain't had no job. You feel what I'm saying? The man was trying to, you know what I'm saying, get the music taken off. You feel me? So, you know what I'm saying, good people, you know what I'm saying? This this young lady right here, man, she just she just got some she got some wicked evil about herself, you feel what I'm saying? She 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 going through things that nobody don't know but her. You can tell that. You feel what I'm saying? Because all her stories she's trying to say 
it seemed like to me she 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 backpacked on the same words. And then you talking about the camera in your room? Tell me how that camera got turned around. I guess she trying to say he turned around the camera so he can jump on her. No, it sounds like me. If you was in the same room, sleep. You know what I'm saying? It sounds like you the one turned that camera around. That would have sound like to me. You feel me? But you know, my good people, you know, that's all I got for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all come and let me know, you know what I'm saying, how y'all feel about this situation. Do y'all think that she she got mad, she got angry because what he wasn't doing for her, then he was trying to go somewhere, probably to meet somebody. She probably thought that he was going to see another woman. You know what I'm saying? Then she probably went off on her, you feel what I'm saying? Because she been out all night, came home about four, four something in the morning, you know what I'm saying, jumped from club to club. You know what I'm saying? Drinking that Casamigo, you hear what I'm saying? In her head with the spinning, you know what I'm saying? Her mind with the ticking, you feel what I'm saying? And she just blowed up, you know what I'm saying? And took all her pain, whatever she was going through, out on him because her and the old girl, I mean, her and her friends was at the club and they were going through a little uh, uh, altercation at the club. You feel me? So I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all come and let me know, you know what I'm saying? That's all I got for y'all, you know what I'm saying? If y'all down me, baby, y'all have been no smack that light, but you know what I'm saying? Y'all know what to do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> y'all know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, and smack that dope bell for me, baby, you heard me? And keep God for her, baby, study relationship. And keep God for her, baby, study friendship, you know what I'm saying? I had to study on that because, man, that girl, man, I'm gone, my good people, you know what I'm saying? I'm gone.